the first thing, uh, quite boring thing, what is AR? AR is actually a combination of real-time mix and computer-generated content with the live uh, video display to give user additional information, like moustache, yeah, you know. Uh, who of you has the Google Pixel 2 or G Google Pixel 3? What rest of the people have? <laughs> An iPhone? No? So, um, as you probably saw inside of your uh, camera application, there is ability to add AR stickers and make funny pictures. So, um, it's kind of maybe useless thing, but anyway, it's AR and it gives new experience and new technology right into your phone and it later will give you ability to build and use uh, a really interesting uh, things. So AR is actually not a super new technology. Uh, the first uh, AR was uh, created in 1968, almost 50 years ago. Uh, in Harvard University. Uh, the first toolkit was done 18 years ago, so that technology as a toolkit and software development uh, package is quite mature. mature. Uh, and uh, Google actually created rebranded AR Core a few years ago, and it was rebranded for their previous project, Project Tango, if you know about it. So what AR is looking like right now. Uh, right now it's, as I said previously, is just a set of funny applications. Who of you was playing Pokemon Go? Oh, cool. Unfortunately, when Pokemon Go started in my country, it was prohibited. So, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I will try to play it today a little bit later. So, the applications like uh, Pokemon Go or Snapchat filters, the dog uh, filter for your face, or ability to play with uh, virtual tiger, or useful thing like IKEA place to store and place an armchair inside of your apartments. Right now, it's not common usage, actually, but in our talk, we will tell you, and I hope we will transform your mind, that it's possible to use AR inside of your application now, or maybe tomorrow. So, um, Augmented reality gives us actually a lot of opportunities, like it might be used in education purposes. It's possible for employees to give a set of the trainings how things are working, how it's necessary to uh, fix pump if pump is broken, or it's, it gives us ability to create an, an entertainment applications with uh, giving users ability to create fun, uh, pictures, if you will open Tinder and you will make few swipes, I bet you will find the pictures with the dog face a lot or Superman or another stuff. So AR is actually inside of our lives. Um, it's also be possible to, it's also possible to use AR in our daily routines just to measure something and share that measurements with our friends and make a competition which uh, car is bigger. Uh, and also it's possible to uh, do some stuff related to the navigation. Uh, a lot of startups were doing a lot of uh, things related to the AR and navigation. They were making special hardware. I think every one of you were looking for such stories and news at the TechCrunch or in other websites. Uh, but anyway, this is the current reality. And with current technologies as hardware and software, we are able to do something. So uh, we made a research actually about existing indoor solutions. Um, and most of them are using special hardware, or it's necessary to spend a lot of time to go to the location and make special preparation to mark that uh, location, to mark that rooms, to mark that corridors, to mark that halls, and etc. So it's necessary to do a lot of work, place hardware or make special 3D scanning uh, of the locations and uh, <coughs> 
uh, or make a post-processing for the images. So uh, fun thing is that yes, all the solutions need a spe special hardware and except of course Apple and Google technologies because of they're not still published, we don't know uh, is it really necessary to place some Wi-Fi routers or any beacons, but anyway, Google and Apple knows everything because of every time user is using their mobile phones, the data goes to the Apple and Google servers to process them. So, um, using AR-based approach to create indoor navigation, it's possible to forget about additional hardware. It's possible to uh, store and share data between users because of using AR as a technology, you are free to do anything. And also it gives you the next axis of freedom. You're able to be an individual trails creator wherever you want. For example, you can create your own trail in your park and share it with your friends. All right. Uh, so, to make an AR indoor application, what is necessary to do? It's necessary just, firstly, I think, uh, to support multi-user and multi-session shareable uh, environment, to have able to share something uh, between users uh, and support multi-session to be able to give users ability to communicate with each other. It's necessary also give possibility to create road, to store roads, to store things like images, videos, text marks, whatever you want. Uh, and also it's necessary to give ability to share that data with the consumers. Because if you are creator and every creator should have a person who will consume that uh, things. Uh, and also, after you create it and got the data, it's necessary to see the data in the uh, real application. So it's necessary to create a set of the tools which will display necessary stuff and that shared images and roles. Uh, so for example, just small teaser uh, about AR indoor navigation. Uh, this is the video from a mobile phone, and it is the way how user is just creating a road inside of the room. So with uh, AR, it's possible just to see at the wall, just staying in the room, try to create a road, which will be possible later to follow and share for some people. Uh, the usage and use cases will be described a little bit later, but it is just the small teaser how it's possible to do that. You're just holding your mobile phone, touching your finger on the screen and creating a road. After we create a road, it's of course necessary to consume the road. It's necessary just to open that uh, road and see uh, how it was done and how it was created. Um, <clears throat> so, this is very important things which it's necessary to follow up and get that we are creating something, sharing and reusing it later. Uh, some technical details, how does it work, we'll uh, describe and tell Anton how it works actually. Thank you, Ivan. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, uh, let's uh, talk about Android-specific stuff. If you want to build Air Core applications on Android, uh, the best thing to use is Air Core Framework. Actually, it's a platform from Google. Uh, and uh, this platform allows you to build augmented reality things and interact with it. It allows you to understand the environment around you. Uh, the core abilities of this platform is that it supports different uh, mobile uh, platforms like Android, iOS, and also you can build uh, your applications and games using Unity and Unreal. Inside of this you can find motion tracking techniques and when you are moving, uh, moving your phone it, it can track its position and orientation. Uh, it understands uh, environment around you. For example, you can detect uh, planes, uh, surfaces, uh, and it also allow you, allows you to work with uh, light. Uh, for example, you can estimate the current light uh, lighting conditions. Um, so, uh, AirCore itself uh, is a, a complicated framework. You have to uh, write uh, low-level things and no OpenGL. 
Uh, but uh, we have another cool, uh, the other cool framework, which is also uh, was built by uh, inside of Google, and it's called Synform. Uh, this framework uh, allows you to write code without knowing OpenGL, and it has a, a real-time render, render inside of it, and it uses high-level APIs to build the objects and virtual scenes. Also, this framework uh, has a Android Studio plugin to, for importing, viewing, and building 3D assets. So, for example, you can create some virtual objects inside of your favorite 3D editor, like uh, 3D Max, for example, then export it into some mesh, like obj file or some other popular format file, uh, and import it into your application. Uh, if you want to share the experience between the devices, uh, you need somehow to, uh, to locate uh, the things uh, uh, from different devices. And for that purpose, we can use AirCore technology, which is called Cloud Anchors. Uh, cloud Anchors allow you to, uh, to use, uh, to track some position inside of the virtual world from different phones. Uh, so, uh, when you create uh, an anchor, you attach uh, virtual um, objects to this anchor. Actually, it could be many different anchors, and uh, this, uh, the position of every anchor is stored uh, remotely on the servers. Uh, if you want to create the anchor, you need to know its coordinates and you can use, uh, for example, the position of your phone or you can uh, set the anchor position programmatically as well. Um, and you can attach anchors to some uh, environment uh, objects like planes or points. Uh, so, how actually cloud anchors work? First of all, you need to create the anchor, right? Uh, and uh, to create the anchor, you need to know its position. For example, you can get it from the camera. Uh, then you need to attach objects to this anchor. Uh, and uh, you need to remember that uh, uh, the anchor pose adapts to world space from frame to frame. For example, user can, can move, uh, and uh, if he or she is holding the phone in front of him, uh, then uh, virtual objects become static and they don't drift or something, which is a common problem for many AR core uh, frameworks. Uh, so, uh, when you host an anchor, you send uh, the image from your phone to, to the servers uh, where it's processed and uh, stored as a sparse point uh, map. Then, when you need to resolve the anchor, I mean, the lo to locate the place where anchor was created, uh, you um, send uh, the request to the server, and again, you are constantly sending the image from your screen to the server uh, where it's processed and tries to find uh, the, uh, your image in the database and ma match it with previously created uh, uh, feature maps, with previously created uh, uh, anchor data. Yeah. Mm. And after that, uh, you can you are getting all the needed information, like Anchor ID, and you know its location, uh, it's trackable, and you can attach virtual objects uh, uh, to this Anchor and recreate the virtual scene from the other device. Uh, and now uh, I, let, I will let Ivan to talk about use cases uh, which are able to, 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 which you can create using AR Core and uh, Scenform framework, thank you. Thanks, Anton. Uh, yeah, let me proceed. Uh, so let's just imagine, yeah? We right now understood how that thing is working. We are able to recognize some locations, some places, and what we can do with that. Uh, we can do with that, for example, the way how we are communicating with our maintenance services. Yeah, for example, my lamp is broken, I'm calling to my agent and I'm saying, hey, my lamp is broken. Uh, to don't describe a lot, of, a lot where that lamp is located, I can just use my mobile phone, uh, point my mobile phone to the lamp which is broken, and let me just try to, yeah. So the, actually the switcher 
is here. It is broken and it is located here, the gold thing. It's broken. So I can, with AR, I am able to just point some place in my location, in my room, uh, which is broken, leave a text marker and send the data to the maintenance department. So that uh, thing might be reused right now in any application. If you are developing any software for companies which are making supervising for gas station, wherever you want, you're just able to integrate it and to integrate that thing into the uh, application will not take so much time, but it will improve the user experience dramatically. It, it will be really, really great. So uh, this is one of the use cases. So um, we are thinking that uh, with that technology, it's possible also create new type of the content. For example, I have a wife and every time I'm searching for my shirt or something else in my apartments, I'm calling to my wife and saying, hey, Inga, where is my shirt located or where are the keys of the car? Uh, before leave, my wife can just make a photo and share it like Ivan, here, uh, they are here and I will not take so much time from her and we will be able to spend the time just talking about our daughter but not about our keys or my shirt. So it's kind of a new uh, type of the content because of right now you're sharing your photos, they are flat. You're just making a photo, but you're not able to move with your mobile phone. So we are thinking that uh, AR should bring, uh, should bring for the users new kind of a content uh, to share, and it will be AR contact. It might be the markup of your location or whatever. Um, another thing which we were uh, thinking and we found the usage of that technology is assistance for the people with disabilities. Uh, for example, there are people with disability like short-term memory loss and they can forget where something is located. Uh, what is necessary to do for them. It's possible just create a small application which will just point to the place where uh, the pills located or use an anchor technology. It's possible just to mark a, a tube with the pills as an anchor and where, wherever, when, wherever that uh, tube will be located, it will be possible just to see that here are the pills, you can take them. Uh, it's possible also to create some tags inside of the room just to remind people to do something and it will not take really a lot of development efforts. It's just using the AR color technology and it's not the funny masks uh, from Snapchat. It can dramatically improve the uh, life quality for the people with disabilities. Another thing uh, which is also might be used and uh, be nice for people uh, is the ERN community. Uh, we created such uh, title for it. You're able actually to create your own quests. Um, when I was young, I wasn't a Boy Scout, but I was involved into the sport tourism section and we were running inside of the forest close to my city, searching for some stuff. Um, and uh, later I knew about geocaching. So with that technology and AR core, everyone in the world is able actually create their own games to just don't sit in the, in the apartments, but run and enjoy the parks and etc. So it's possible to create your own excursions, your quests inside of the uh, parks, whatever. And TR gives you it with the anchor detections ready for, for free and it works great. Uh, another thing uh, which is also might be used uh, used with the AR technology is instant app applications. Imagine you're going to the apartment complex and you're searching for the apartments which are open house today and which will be sold or which might be rented. And sometimes it's really hard to find those apartments. So for example, real estate agent is able just to place a QR core, an iPad or cheap 
Amazon device with the QR code and later you can scan and just follow the road to the apartments or to the building which is uh, going to be sold uh, next time. So this is just a set of the use cases which might be uh, done with ER technology and right now Anton will talk a little bit about code. Yeah. Okay, I'm excited about, uh, to know about how to build all this stuff on Android. Let me show you some code. First of all, if you want to use uh, Air Core and Cloud Anchors, you have to create a Google Cloud Platform or Firebase project. Then you need to set up an API key inside of the console uh, and enable Air Core Cloud Anchor API. Uh, and you have to put this API key inside of your Android manifest as a, uh, in this example. Uh, and uh, let's uh, talk a bit how to create cloud anchors. Uh, first of all, uh, you need to get access to, uh, to the camera and to know its pose. And then you are using uh, AirCore session object to create an uh, anchor. Uh, right here. Uh, session sends uh, anchors data and uh, the data from your camera to the server and uh, you need to wait for several seconds or so uh, for this information to be processed. Uh, so actually you need to track the anchor state and uh, I will show it to you uh, in a second how to do that. So once you have uh, the anchor uh, you can use an uh, object which is called node or anchor node, and this object represents an anchor transformation within the scene. Uh, and you can attach um, your renderables, your 3D objects to this node uh, and locate it inside of the virtual space. Uh, here you can see how to track anchor state. Uh, first of all, um, it's nice to do this thing during the frame update. As I mentioned uh, before, uh, the, you, you need to track uh, items' positions uh, from frame to frame, right? Uh, so that's why it's recommended oops, uh, to use um, uh, on update listener, which is activated uh, every time when new frame is available. And inside of this listener, uh, again, you let's say you have several anchors to be resolved, uh, to be tracked. Uh, you can get these anchors from the frame, uh, and then you need to ask to ask uh, the state of every anchor. And once the state equals to success, the anchor is successfully stored uh, on the server, and uh, it uh, allows you uh, to get the anchor ID and share it with the users. So, uh, yeah, uh, to share it to the users, uh, we are using uh, the resolving process. Uh, let's say we already have Anchor ID uh, on some other uh, user's phone, and uh, to, you need to, to resolve this Anchor. Uh, I mean, the user uh, activates the application, activates the camera, and tries to uh, find the place where the Anchor was created. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we ask session to resolve cloud anchor using this anchor ID and start uh, tracking anchor state until it equals to success. It means that anchor is resolved. Uh, it can take a few seconds or so, depending on how many anchors you are using. Uh, and after that, uh, the anchor uh, is located inside of virtual environment and you can attach your virtual objects to this anchor. In our uh, case, with virtual roots, we store uh, a virtual root as a collection of 3D points. When we create the anchor, we store this uh, collection inside of Firebase project. And uh, when we need to resolve the anchor on some other device, uh, we um, download the collection of 3D points uh, their coordinates uh, relatively to anchor position, and that's how we restore it around the anchor. And the same place where it was created before. Uh, you can ask how we can draw the lines with your phones. Um, uh, our application is built uh, such a way that you can draw the line while you holding the uh, tapping and holding the, your phone, right? Uh, for that purpose, you can use uh, on peak touch listener, 
And inside of this listener, uh, it's activated when you, for example, uh, tap the screen. You can get access to the camera. You can get the position and location orientation of this camera and start drawing. Uh, here we're using some trick. Uh, when the user creates a virtual route, uh, it's it nice to, to make the line visible, to, to create the line in front of the user's phone so that it's, uh, the user can see it while he's moving his phone. Uh, so to do that, uh, we create a virtual ray, an invisible, invisible ray, uh, which is pointed uh, from the user's screen. And in this ray, we just locate some point at some distance, or let's say one foot, uh, and start drawing just from this place. Uh, here you can you can see how we can get access to camera position and orientation. Uh, for example, it can be useful if you want to identify objects nearby, like in game development, for example, to show objects that are near you and uh, the rest will be hidden in some mist, right? Or here you can know the position and orientation of the user's phone and to track its direction if the user is following the route or not. And you also can know the distance, how far the user away is from root, and so on. Uh, by default, when you create AirCore applications, uh, uh, the application activates uh, planes uh, detecting uh, to, to start attaching things to the environment, right? But in our case, when you create virtual routes, you don't need to attach it to some plane. Uh, so you can disable it. For example, in AR core fragment, you can get access to, to the config, and in this config, you can activate Cloud Anchor mode, like to tell that we are ready to use Cloud Anchors, and you can disable plane finding mode. Also, uh, by default, uh, AR core uh, shows uh, to you the discovery controller UI, which you can see on the right side. So you can just hide it using these two lines of code. Uh, what else? Mm, so here you can see the example how to create the line. Uh, we're using Material Factory, which allows you to, con to create an opaque uh, material with a given color. Uh, in our case, yeah, uh, it could be white, for example. Uh, and when you are ready to draw the line, for example, to when you are ready to recreate the route, uh, you have the collection of points. Uh, you are creating, actually, when you create the route, it's not just a line, right? It's a tube. And you have to create uh, small cylinders between every two points, right? So here you can see that we creating a renderable definition, uh, which contains the visual information of some renderable. Renderable is just a virtual object. So uh, inside of this class, we are creating uh, a mesh, which represents the cylinder. And then we uh, build a shape, uh, like real 3D object, and show it on the scene using AR core um, methods. Uh, as you um, noticed in our demo, we also using uh, Android views. So this uh, thing is just Android standard layout. In our case, just lay, um, linear layout. So you, you can attach it to your virtual objects as well. And on this slide, you see how to do that. Uh, you are using view renderable builder, which is able to download your layout asynchronously. Uh, so, uh, and once in, it's available for you, uh, you can attach it to some node in, inside of virtual space. And um, for some cases, it can be useful to create 2D map. For example, in some games as well, uh, you want to see your position in the virtual world. Uh, so the map actually is just a projection to X and Z axis. Uh, so here you can see the piece of code, uh, which allows you to draw the, the line uh, just on Android canvas. And uh, now uh, let me summarize actually what we learned while we were building our application for indoor navigation. Uh, first of all, uh, 
if, if you create long routes, you should have several cloud anchors because it's not recommended to uh, attach objects to the cloud anchor, which is uh, away from you, like uh, several hundred feet or something. Because in this case, uh, some virtual object can start drifting or shifting and some other uh, show some, some other side effects. Uh, but at the same time, if you will create many cloud anchors, um, it will affect the performance of application because it's time consuming and expensive operation. Uh, the phone uh, creates uh, feature descriptions of every frame and sends to the server to resolve the anchor. So keep it in mind also. Um, and yes, actually this thing uh, should be done during every frame update because uh, while we are moving, uh, we need to track uh, the position of every object in real time. Uh, if you have complicated uh, scenes and maybe need to create some 3D animations, it would be easy than uh, inside of Unity or Unreal engines because they have special techniques to create animations, for example, by keyframes and so on. Also, you need to remember about uh, two uh, different uh, coordinate spaces, like local and world, and uh, you need to know when to convert between them. And all the translation units are given in, in meters, not pixels or something else, which is really cool because uh, you really can understand uh, how big is the object, uh, how, how, what's the distance between the objects. Uh, so, uh, when we are using AR core, uh, this solution has several limitations. First of all, not every phone supports AR core library. Uh, it should be Android 7 or later and OpenGL 3 or later. Uh, currently, AR core cloud anchors become invalid after one day. It's a quite heavy limitation, but I believe this is just temporary, temporary limitation. And uh, sooner or later, uh, the cloud anchors will uh, be uh, available for a longer period of time. So it means that right now, currently, if you create some root, uh, uh, it will be destroyed in one day, which is not cool, but it's just temporarily again. Also, Air Core API uh, has quotas. You can send only 30 write requests and 300 read requests per minute for one project. And uh, as a common limitation for AR core for AR frameworks, if you are shaking your device or moving it too fast, too fast, virtual object uh, can disappear for a second uh, until it will be resolved again. Uh, and yeah, this technique uses your camera. That's why it probably won't be working in the dark unless you're using one uh, latest Pixel phone, which is able to show your pictures uh, even in the dark. Uh, and now Ivan will tell you about our tool chain. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. So <clears throat> as a result of our development and our research, we decided to create uh, our own tool chain. We decided to name it ER Magellana. Maybe it will be renamed a little bit later, who knows? So that tool chain will give every developer ability to create uh, their own AR experience, integrate it right inside of their applications, and do not have a lot of issues with research and, uh, and learning about AR core. We will provide a set of the primitives to create uh, an application to start dive into the AR technologies, so it will be possible with our tool chain, uh, create roles, store inside of your virtual reality, not virtual, augmented reality, um, such things like texts, images, videos, roads, notes, arrows, pictures, whatever you will want, and uh, it will provide also a set of the classes to create things like 2D screenshotter and also will give you ability to have uh, an uh, instant app uh, things and be able to reuse it inside of your application. Uh, 
So the website where that ER tool chain will be located is ermagellana.com. There is a special uh, input. If you're interested, please leave your email and you, you will get uh, the notification about it. And uh, today in that uh, conference building, I just created uh, the thing which shows uh, the abilities of our tool chain. So let me just check. I will turn off the audio. So with that uh, tool chain and our application, I was able to just create a roles to the conference rooms right inside of that building downstairs uh, for the Robertson 2, for the Fisher Easter, Fisher East. So it was necessary to go through the, <laughs> through the street to get there. And uh, very, very soon the tool chain will be available and it will be possible just forget about all that math stuff and uh, create uh, applications which will operate with just primitives which are real people friendly like images and don't think about Android framework things. So that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, so the question was about the difference between local coordinate space and global coordinate space. When you create the anchor, uh, it has a global coordinate space which is stored on the server. So every anchor has its unique coordinates, right? But when you uh, attach virtual objects to opposite, like relatively to this anchor, these virtual objects uh, have uh, local coordinate space. So that uh, you are able to, to make transformations of uh, the separate objects or the transformation of all the scene simultaneously? So the question is about uh, how much CPU requires for these operations, right? Uh, the, um, most of processing is done on the server, but you constantly need to uh, transform the image from your phone. So I think it's similar to playing some video on the phone. Yeah. The question if is the code available or not yet, we are working on it as Ivan mentioned and if you want to know some news about it, you can use this link where it was before and subscribe on the notifications. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>